So, welcome guys, episode 13. Uh, we're on a roll here. Um, we're currently at Bakersfield at night, as you can see. And why? Because I'm going to do my flight test, my second one, um, doing traffic patterns at night um, here at Bakersfield, an uncontrolled airport. Well, as you can see, uh, we are parked at a different spot than where we um, finished last time. That's because we needed to refuel. So before, um, or just after the episode, uh, I remember to do so and taxied to the fuel tank. So that's where we are right now. Uh, let me just check and recenter. Yeah. So there's the fuel tank, as you can see. Um, and um, well, we are already uh, we're quite close to runway three four. Where we will um, take off, do our left hand traffic patterns, and um, hopefully, I will demonstrate my traffic pattern flight skills once more. Um, so, um, yeah, it's going to be straightforward. Again, I'm going to um, go to the flight test overlay, so my webcam will be disabled, uh, letting you guys know, or any other new viewers know, that I'm focused on um, on performing, <laughs> on doing my, uh, my flight uh, procedures correctly. And then afterwards, after shutdown, I enable my webcam again, and uh, looking at the chat because otherwise when I chat and uh, or need to watch the chat and interact with you guys while I'm flying um, that might mess up my my flight uh, performance so that's why so um, and while I'm doing all my procedures uh, as I did uh, previously uh, with the flight test um, I'm just going to well think out loud but uh, not really explain myself too much, uh, just going through with my flows. I mean, the goal here today is to show you and to show myself that I'm able to do these traffic patterns. So um, that's the general idea. I will do the weather briefings and stuff, but uh, just more quickly uh, based on my own um, based on my own pace and, and understanding. So um, that's it, I guess. So guys, um, I hope you enjoy the flight test here at Bakersfield, nighttime traffic pattern flying. I'm passing through touch 500, come on, uh, 715. 715, that's Okie do. Um, so, um, let me uh, go to the uh, overlay here. Uh, boom, there we are. So, flight test mode, um, I'm going to concentrate on my um, on my own flight and uh, not monitor chat only after shutdown I will uh, chat with you guys if you notice anything that I'm doing wrong or skipping during my traffic pattern flying please let me know on chat uh, because afterwards after shutdown uh, we will review and any comments or suggestions are very much welcome okay um, so first off what I'm going to do is check the um, uh, the weather so here on the sky vector this is Bakersfield so meadows let us see what the weather is like um, zero knots uh, clear sky looks perfect uh, let's go to the weather briefing looks good general idea here no rain forecast uh, but we do see here a um, trough I believe which might indicate heavy winds and also perhaps bad weather so that's something that I need to remember while doing my briefing here um, let me see so uh, these are the forecast uh, in terms of weather conditions again you can see here moderate or greater turbulence is there an altitude associated with that yet yeah, so that's high level uh, 12,000 feet looks good freezing level we should look out for in terms of um, icing if there is a lot of vapor in the air and as you can see the marginal VFR is coming in from the north east but will never get to us it's currently 17 Zulu so this is for 8 Zulu so that's in about an hour or so which looks good graphical GMATs this is valid for 1500 Zulu let's go to 18 it's closer by um, we are about here, so we are not in any G Aramet. Let's have a look at the one north of us, covering San Francisco. Um, below, I guess. 10,000 visibility, below 3, 
statute miles yes and, and fog so that's clearly IFR but we're not in that and here's that uh, low turbulence it says low here base at servers to 10,000 let me have a quick I mean what does it say here 12,000 I guess moderate or greater turbulence okay so I guess that's tops what that means that symbol I should look that up in if yeah because here it says it's from the service up so that's good to know uh, so south of us there is low turbulence okay uh, no sick uh, sick mats active no thunderstorm stuff uh, this is the area forecast uh, southern california uh, sky clear outlook view far outlook view far outlook view far so that's uh, perfect ceiling forecast for what time zero six zulu so that's not really a forecast we need to go to 18. we can see some visibility issues here uh and this is sorry this is cloud ceiling so we can expect well this is a bit north of us i guess so that would be marginal vfr cloud ceiling conditions um, but perhaps it's at 3,006 um, thousand, which is uh, plenty for us just to do traffic patterns on Bakersfield, so that's good. This is visibility. Um, let me have a look here. It's uh, in the green, so... And what what is the date? This is Tuesday. No, I don't want to look at Tuesday. I want to look at Wednesday 18. Always check the, the time. Okay, visibility. That might be an issue. We are at... Well, this could even be IFR. That's below two statute miles. Well, but Bakersfield is not that far into this state. It's on this side. So uh, I guess it's about six to three to five, which is um, uh, comparable to previously, but uh, previous days. But that's just something that we need to look out for. Visibility, okay. Uh, turbulence, I can see in the south here, turbulence. What's the time again? This is a forecast for valid 16 can we go a little bit further down the road yeah 18 zulu again no turbulence here in our area it's a bit more to the south as you already know satellite imagery well again on the ocean doesn't concern us uh, and so the infrared one also isn't relevant uh, vapor looks good and winds no we don't see any strong rings hey dad welcome um yeah and also no winds okay so then very quickly the nodems again i'm expecting the exact same nodems for bakersfield as before but you never know out of service out of service out of service and yeah that's the same kind of helicopter visibility reduction uh, stuff okay and we don't need to file a five plan because we're going to stay on the traffic pattern here on Baker's Field. So that completes our uh, weather briefing. We're just going to do left hand departures here from the runway 34. We're going to do a couple and then we're going to land back and see if I messed up or not, whether I deserve to pass to the next stage of my training. Okay, so back to the cockpit. Boop. Um, what we're going to do first, because we are in the dark, uh, I cannot use a flashlight here, so um, I cannot do a cold and dark test if I don't have any light. So I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to do my batteries on here and my panel lights on. Yep, there they are, and I will turn on my track IR just to see, uh, just to have an idea what I'm looking at. Um, so control we lock, we remove park and brakes. Yeah, I can see the hand there moving, so the park and brakes are set. Oh, I, my side tech panel was not. Yeah, so now it's set. Um, life vest, fire extinguisher, window is open, ELT is set to auto, cabin air heat is set, flaps up, levers are set, cross feed is good, cow flaps are closed, elevator trim, let me see if it's responsive. Yeah, it is, set to take off. Rudder uh, trim is also good. Uh, static air is in. Um, transponder set to standby. This is all on. This is okay. Let me check whether. Um, 
Oh, that's not really the cold dark. I'm already moving into the interior uh, pre-flight inspection. Um, can we look beneath? Um, yeah, lights are all off. Avionics were off. Batteries were on. Back. Beacon is on. Yeah, that's set. So that's good. Then we uh, will check our uh, lights, exterior lights and pitot heat. Uh, but before we do, I need to remove my pitot tube cover. So let's do that. Um, pitot tube cover, wheel trucks and everything else is already removed. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Landing lights on. Oh, we can already see it. Taxi lights, strobe lights, nav lights, beacon we're already on and pitot heat is on. Um, let's go to the outside to have a check whether they are actually working. To the front, check IR. Ooh, scary eyes. Um, there you are, taxi light, landing lights, nav lights, strobe lights. On the other wing, we can see them too. Beacon lights. Yep, there it is. Position light on the back is working. Uh, let's hear the war stall warning sound. And let's check whether the pitot heat is actually hot. And it is. Back into the cockpit. Check IR. On pause. Uh, landing lights off, taxi lights off, strobe lights off. Nav lights off, pitot heat off. Okay, so that means that um, our uh, lights are working. We can move on um, to the right. So we checked our uh, lights here. Um, then we can pull down the flaps. Let's see if they go down in sync. And they do, which is good. Uh, we can turn on the avionics, beep, full illumination here, standby which is good, this is good, CTAF, ADIS is good, um, then we can check whether the enunciator panel is working, and it is, no low oil fuel because we just refueled, so that's a good thing, uh, we can already set our altimeter just to zero airport elevation because we're going to stay on Bakersfield to do traffic patterns, so that's much more practically useful. I can already set this one, two, three, four. This is all set. This is all set. As you can see, fuel gauge full. And um, that is about it. So, avionics off, battery off. Okay. Um, then we can start with the exterior pre-flight. So, pause and let's go outside. Obviously, we should have, uh, we should use a um, flashlight here, which we don't have in eight ways. Walk around. Package door closed. Tie down removed. Bolts are all in. No weird stuff. Again, bolt is in here. It's also in here. Looks good. Uh, wiggle of the elevator trim tab. It looks good. Wiggle by the flaps. Looks good. Hinges look good. Aileron. Hinges look good too. Tie down is removed. Fuel vent is clear. Chocks removed. Fuel drain. No contamination. Let's look into the wings here and we can see uh, enough fuel quantity. Confirms the fuel gauge. Let's have a quick look at the overall structure here of the airplane. So the antennas, com antennas, nav antenna. Uh, windshields, no broken stuff or other weird things going on. No, nope. so that's good too. Uh, let's move on to the static air. It's clear. Again, fuel drain seems clear. Enough room here in the strut. Um, we can m open our cowl flaps, which I always forgetting. Uh, we cannot see them very clearly. I hope you guys can, but they are here and they look secure and uh, are okay. Antennas. They all look good. Um, let's move on to the front. Leading edge of the propeller. It feels good. So we simulate uh, no dents, no other stuff. Um, then the air intakes, so the engine intakes, um, they look good and are clear. Air filter looks good. Uh, oil between 96 quarts, good color. Air, aesthetic air here is clear. Other wing, also full fuel, looks good. Drain, no contamination, looks good. Wheel chucks removed. 
Uh, tie down removed, fuel vent is clear. Ailerons on the other side, they look good. And finally, flap wiggle. And here we can also see that the hinges look good. Uh, well, as part of the pre-flight, I have um, I will also check the uh, flight control flight controls here if I can see them. Perhaps I should wait when I have more more light. But turn to the right, aileron response. Turn to the left. Can barely see it. You guys, I guess, don't. Elevator works and rudder works too. We're going to check that at run-up again, but I would like to include it in my pre-flight anyway. Um, so that completes the exterior pre-flight. We don't need to um, visit the maintenance hangar, so that's fine. Then um, we can do our before engine startup. So we're going to fasten our seat belts. Whoop, uh, there they are. Got a sip of water here. Yep. And we can close the door. Mm, guessing where the door can be. Yeah, there it is. Okay, door is closed. Windows are open, which is good. What is our pilot briefing? Well, what we're going to do again for one final time, uh, departing runway 34, which is to the left of us here. It's behind that fuel tank, so we're already close to 34. Depart, left-hand traffic um, is going to be 1,000 feet. So we're going to do a couple, then land again, and um, that's it. Very simple flight test here, but at night. So. Uh, we don't have that much visual reference, so again, it's going to be challenging and much more uh, instrument-based, instrument-rated based, uh, which is going to be challenging and cool. Um, alrighty, that will be our briefing. Well, winds, we don't have any winds, and um, expected taxi already mentioned. Um, yeah, that's about it. So what we can do now is, I will turn on the batteries already, uh, so I have a look what's going on. Uh, release the parking brakes. Uh, because I would like to see whether my brakes are firm. I can very faintly see what's actually going on there. Um, but it seems to work. Park and brake set. Then our lights. Brake light is on, but we should also put on our nav lights, because at night that's important. Taxi lights we turn on once we uh, start the taxi, not now. Also, I, I read that it's, uh, especially here at the FBO, or whatever this is, um, you should be careful turning on your taxi lights, uh, because it really is blinding to other... Um, uh, to other people walking on the ramp or even other pilots who are on final or whatever. So uh, turning your taxi, way, uh, taxi lights on um, is something that you should do, uh, well, being much more uh, careful than just simply uh, putting them on, turning them on. Um, okay, that's on. And uh, what we need to do now is open our cow flaps, uh, which were already open, and turn our fuel tank to both and that's it and then we completed our before engine start so let's do our engine start what we can do right here blast way is clear and uh, we can just taxi to the right here there's a fence here on the left but I guess uh, we will be fine and we taxi uh, to the right here and enter the, the taxiway so uh, batteries were already on F uh, throttle quarter quarter inch open um, hands on the mixture lever fuel pump one, two, three, close, fuel pump closed, um, hand on the ignition switch, throttle is already set, uh, parking brakes is set, let's look outside if there's no people flow, there isn't, so clear prop. Ooh, it barely went again. Um, perhaps we should prime it a little bit more, so fuel uh, ignition switch to off, fuel pump. Let's do it again, a very quick one. And that's about it. Um, again, make sure of, uh, throttle is in. Let's look if it's clear. It is clear, clear prop. Ah, there it goes. 1200. And I can see now the oil pressure coming up. I will turn on the lights uh, in just a sec, guys. Um, generator on, so we see a charge, a bigger charge, because we were draining our batteries much more. Um, a bit more than usual uh, in these night uh, conditions. Leaning, there is the leaning. Reset to 1000. Avionics on, flaps up. 
and put our transponder to on and it is set to 1200 it is set to 1200, C dev is good um, I will turn on my lights now let's see or should I do use the other one you see there are so many light buttons here let's remove the yoke no, I, that one is ugly can I also turn that one on or that one, yeah, that one looks gorgeous let me see well, this is about right okay hey, FS Production Live, welcome um, I shouldn't look. I shouldn't look at the chat. I should focus here on my on my flight. This is a flight test. So um, we allow the engine to warm up. A cylinder head temperature, uh, oil head temperature is still in the low. Um, so we uh, can s just stay here for a bit. Listen to Adis. Okay, that's good. Well, we're not going to reset our altimeter, uh, just stay uh, here in a traffic pattern, so zero altitude is more, more practical, as I already mentioned. Uh, this is set to local time, doesn't really matter. Um, this is all set, and no navigation stuff, heading bug is already set. Yeah, we are ready to taxi. I'm just going to check the checklist now, because this part I don't know for sure if I didn't miss anything. Well, taxi light is something that I can turn on, but I... I think it before taxi it is yeah okay it's part of before taxi okay 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 crosswind we don't need softwind we don't need and turn slip again yep yeah, yep yeah. okay cool so far so good so then taxi lights on let me see where are they there they are look how realistic that looks I love these uh, improved taxi lights by uh, by eight away so uh, parking brakes released gentle turn be sure that our tail doesn't hit that fence so, a little bit straightforward here, yeah. Low RPM. And let's uh, get onto the taxiway. And the taxiway is around here, I guess. Whoa. Uh, slip indicator worked, turn indicator already worked, but I didn't really firmly check the brakes. Well, I did use differential braking, but it seems to work. Compass was already set, engine is good. And we don't need to apply any um, soft feel or crosswind correction. Low RPM, which is good. There we go on Bakersfield. Control airport. No chatter on the channel on this frequency, so chances are no other traffic, but you never know. So far, so good. Cylinder temperature. Still, the oil temperature is very low. Okay, a little bit braking here. Differential braking. Make sure no one is coming towards us. There we go. And we're already at the end, or the start of runway 3-4. Also, I just think I'm just thinking about the fact that we refueled, so our airplane is much more heavy than before. So chances are we need to pull on that yoke a little more firmly when we do our takeoff. Run 
up area. Okay, getting here to the edge, far edge, in case anyone else joins us to do a run-up. Well, there's no real strong wind here, so it doesn't really matter which direction, what direction we point our airplane towards, except for the blast way, so away from the taxiway and runway. Reset the parking brakes, and let's reset to a thousand. Well, we cannot start our run-up because the oil temperature isn't quite in the green yet. You can see it is rising, but slowly. Especially because of this short taxi route, uh, it didn't get enough time to do so. So I'm going to reset it to 1200, which is still low RPM, but just to speed up the warming progress or speed. Um, we are lean, so that also um, allows the um, the engine to warm up a little bit more quickly. Again, we can do our briefing. Uh, we set our uh, heading bug to 34. Uh, we are going to take off about here. Uh, then left hand traffic pattern um, VY is 80 <laughs> yeah it's not that difficult I mean we're not really incorporating um, rejected takeoff procedures yet which we are gonna soon so what would you do when your engine quits on you just after rotation or when you are at 200 feet AGL or at 800, a a a AGL, 800 feet AGL well that stuff uh, I would really like to practice too which we're gonna. A couple of laps and then we return back to the ramp. Well, as you can see, the oil temperature is already coming into the green, reaching the green, which is good. We don't need any flaps. Elevator trim is set. What we can already do is our uh, elevator um, or our flight control check. So to the right, it goes down to the left goes down, elevator up, down, and the rudder, which also works, still works. So we did our flight control check two times, which makes more sense. Almost in the green. Anything else we can do? Well, we can listen to ADIS again. Not really that important. What we could do is turn off our taxi light because it doesn't really uh, help us. And also, if there were, uh, if there was other traffic taxiing towards us, um, then that could be blinding our taxi light. Also, if you're pointing towards the numbers of the runway or waiting at the threshold, also um, good practice is to turn off your taxi lights as um, airplanes are coming down or could come down to land. That taxi light could be very blinding for. Um, parties to get uh, before they do their touchdowns well oil pressure oil temperature come on not quite just wait a sec cylinder head temperature is already in the green but that oil temperature needs to warm up a bit more because otherwise we might damage the airplane cross check the, uh, the compass with the heading indicator still works Oh man, it was a busy working day. I I considered not flying really, but I felt too excited to do so <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and also traffic pattern flying is a bit more routine than those cross country flights that we did uh, yesterday. Or cross country flight, it was a practice flight, but still those are much more demanding still for me than these traffic patterns. Okay, we're in the green. Um, let's do our run up. So mixture full. Uh, again verify both in the green which is good so let's go to 1800. There it goes, no non-shader messages. Engines look stable and in the green. Um, let's do our mag check. So uh, left, small dip is good, back to both. Right looks good too, back to both. Uh, let's turn on our landing lights briefly to see a dip in the ammeter. Boop, yep, it's working, it's charging. And the RPM. First cycle, obvious, it works. Manifold pressure should rise a bit when we do. Uh, yep, it does. And finally, the oil pressure to see if that dips in and then resets itself naturally. And it does. So the governor is working. 
uh, that's 1800, then we do a full idle. Again, no enunciated messages, engine doesn't quit on us. Engine looks good, primary instruments look good too. Okay, seems to work quite well. Reset to a thousand and we keep in the mixture because we're just about to take off, I guess. Flight control checks we already did. I guess that was it. Let me check the checklist. Um, before takeoff. Yeah, cabin doors. Oh yeah, right. The windows. Closed. And seat belts are set. Elevator trim was set. Flaps we don't need. Mixture transponder. Takeoff briefing already did. Navigation lock we don't need. Clock we don't need too. Takeoff roll. Yeah, landing lights, strobe lights on, heading indicator, crosswind. Yeah, okay, cool, we're ready. So, landing lights on. Boom, there they are. Strobe lights are now on. Gonna release the parking brakes and uh, head down to the runway. What we can do, well, first before we do, I just would like to do the uh, 360 here, just to make sure there's no one in the pattern. Pilot Edge is live right now. No, and no one on base. Final. Cool. Bakersfield traffic. Scanning Papu Tel Tango. You might be departing runway 34 for left closed traffic. Bakersfield. And Bakersfield traffic. Uh, Piper Archer Ooh, 34 cool. Bravo tax runway 34. Nice. We've got company. Okay, let me see. Uh, here we go. 34. Okay, line up first. Make sure that I've lined up correctly, so not really. This is much better. Then, get throttle slowly. Keep in that right rudder already a bit. Engine looks good, still in the green. And full power. Now that's more stable. Still a bit to the right. Airspeed's alive, 60. Rotate, pull on that yoke, keep in the right rudder. Allow the airplane to speed up to about 80 knots and there we go now we should be aware of the other traffic which is now taxiing 234 and uh, develop situational awareness okay and that climb is okay 700 feet we're going to start our crosswind turn Traffic, so let's make that sh shallow turn. Shallow bank turn. There's a thousand. Push on that yoke. And we are on the crossfield crosswind leg. About here. Trim a bit, so like so, and let's make that turn to the left. Bakersfield traffic, Scanning Papa Tel Tango, Mark is turning the left downwind, runway three four four eight, touching go Bakersfield. So far, so good. There comes the heading bug. Next step is going to be to turn on or add one notch of flaps. See if we can uh, see the other traffic. No. Also, no announcement of any takeoff, which comes important as we are almost nearing nearing base turn. Also, a good thing to know that on an uncontrolled airport, um, first notch of flaps. Just you should never instruct other pilots what to do. So, in case the other guy would depart while we are on final or report being on final, we should divert. We should never play the role of air traffic control. Okay, allow that airspeed to bleed off. A little bit nose down. Uh, 
That's about right. Let's make that turn. Bakersfield traffic scanning. Popitel Tango and Mike is turning left base. Runway 34 for a touch and go. Bakersfield. There comes the heading bug. And that's base. About 80 knots, which is good. Another notch of flaps. Four whites. No other traffic. So now I'm getting curious about that other guy. Who might be texting just next to the puppy lights there. So that's good. Yeah, he's texting. That's about it. That's him. That's here. Okay, let's make the gentle turn. No, not yet. Or we can make a, uh, a shallow turn. Bakersfield traffic, Scanning Pop Hotel Tango, and Mike is turning final. Runway 34 for a touch and go, Bakersfield. Well, he uh, should have a good, uh, a good view of us coming in. Okay, look for that speed. A little bit overshot the runway there. All right, Bakersfield. Piper Archer 34 Bravo holding short for landing traffic will be left close traffic, Bakersfield. Cool. Okay, um, field made. Flaps. Okay, so that traffic uh, is aware of us, which is good. And hopefully, this is going to be a very nice sequence traffic pattern flying, which is awesome. It's the first time. A little bit high. So, focus now. There are the landing lights, ground illumination. 65 knots should go a bit slower than before because last time I was too fast before touchdown pull on that yoke oh that was a sink okay we are on the runway flaps up and full throttle slowly yep there she goes keep in that right rather 60, rotate, and there we go. No need to announce. But I will announce when we do our uh, crosswind leg, I guess. It makes sense for the other guy waiting, holding short there at 3-4 to know that we made our turn. I don't know what time or what separation you should actually uh, ensure. And Piper, Piper, Archer, 3-4 Bravo, taking runway 3-4, left coast traffic. If uh, he should actually wait for me to uh, go to downwind until he uh, departs, or I don't know what the idea is. Okay. Other traffic. Bakersfield traffic is kind of poppy tilting. Mike is turning left crosswind. For one way, three, four, touch and go. Bakersfield. A little bit too slow. Too steep turn. Yeah, there we are. So push on that yoke. Uh, push on that yeah, yoke. Throttle a little bit back. Awesome. No other traffic around. No. So let's make that another turn. Biggest wheel traffic. Scanning Papa Tell Tango and Mike is turning left. Downwind runway 34 for a touching go. Biggest field. And Bakersfield, Archer 34 Bravo is on the upwind runway 34, Bakersfield. Okay, good. So he's still on the upwind. So as you can see, he is already taking into consideration our position. So in a way, what, what, what you actually need to do, what I'm trying to do, is not really only flying my own airplane, but managing the entire traffic pattern flow to ensure separation. So my awareness, my situational awareness, goes beyond my own airplane, but includes the entire traffic pattern, which is very cool. Well, we're now with the two of us, but imagine being with four or five people in the traffic pattern. Well, five is a bit too much, but... And Bakersfield, 334 Bravo is turning left cross, one runway 34, Bakersfield. Okay, so that sounds good. Well, still too short. 
so now also it becomes quite relevant to keep on that speed so if you now would fly 65 knots here obviously that would be a danger to traffic separation so that's why it's important to keep on those air speeds because otherwise um, things don't run that smoothly Bakersfield traffic, Scalane, Pop Hotel Tango Mike is turning left base, runway 3448, touch and go, Bakersfield. So now we're going to reduce speed to 80 and keep that descent going. Where's that heading bug? It's coming up. So now we are on base. Bakersfield, uh, Archer 34 Bravo, midfield, left down one, 34, Bakersfield. Okay, he's midfield. There's the runway, another notch of flaps. Let's make our shallow turn already towards final. No other guys there. Watch that speed, not too slow. Bakersfield traffic, Scanning Pop Hotel Tango and Mike is turning final. Runway 3 4, touch and go, Bakersfield. 80, bit too fast, and again, well, that's not a bad altitude better than before. Now let's improve on that landing. Now what he can do on the traffic pattern there, the other guy, he could extend his downwind to um, allow himself yeah, more time. Traffic, uh, R34 Bravo turning left base 34. But he's so. not doing. <laughs> I mean that would be a smart move because then you buy yourself some time. Made the, fi made the field, flaps. Okay, a little bit more low. Allow that airspeed to bleed off. Now, this would be a better glide slope, I guess, or a better way of approaching. Nose up, focusing on the end of the runway, throttle back. This is much better. Okay, so I'm coming into steep, I guess, last time. Hey, Bakersfield, Archer, 3 for Bravo, turning final, 3 4, touching it, Bakersfield. Bakersfield traffic, scanning Pop Hotel, Tango and Mike, rotating uh, in the upwind leg, Bakersfield. Okay, let's get to VY again. There we are, so pull on that yoke to keep it at VY. A little bit too much right rudder, stay on heading. So I guess now we're going to do our full stop. fast but well, it's not really a big problem but there we are look no other traffic shallow turn bigger shield traffic scanning pop hotel tango and mark is turning on the left crosswind runway three four for a full stop this time bigger shield there we are push on that yoke we can now make a more steeper turn there is that heading bug. Well, so far, I feel quite relaxed doing hey, so. Bakersfield traffic, Richard 34 Bravo is only up 134, BFR departure to the north, Bakersfield. Well, and he's going to depart the traffic pattern. Okay, so he is in a concern to us. Still, other traffic might enter the traffic pattern. So we need to stay close or aware. Bakersfield traffic, Scani, Pop Hotel, Tango, and Yamaika is turning left downwind, runway 34, full stop, Bakersfield. What I'm also noticing is, what I also read in that Radio VFR book um, we mentioned last time, is you shouldn't release the push to talk button too quick. Uh, but keep it pressed until you really finished your, um, your transmission. 100 feet too low. But parallel to the runway. Can we see the other traffic? Yeah, there's the other traffic departing. Well, that's awesome. I mean, this is just the beginning of exploring Pilot Edge. Imagine doing this at the congested LA area. Which is going to be awesome. Um, last time, I uh, already mentioned, I guess, in the in the, uh, in the previous episode that uh, one of the other streamers, Flight Simmer, Flight Sim streamers, like uh, uh, 
John Fly it was, um, uh, invited me to do group flights, which is also a fun way to interact and fly together on Pilot, uh, pilot Edge. Something that I'm noticing, by the way, is that I'm pretty far from the airfield, so my initial crosswind lag is a little bit too extended. Oh, shit. I've pushed down on the yoke. Uh, the whole idea is that if you do experience a engine out on the traffic pattern, you should have enough uh, distance, or you should be close enough to the traffic, uh, to, to the runway, to make a landing and glide back to the airport. Bakersfield traffic, Skyline, Papotel, Tango, and Mike is turning left base, runway 34 for a full stop, Bakersfield. And Bakersfield traffic, Archer 24 Bravo is about 5 miles north of the field, 2,000 feet maneuvering. Awesome. Well, those are good announcements, by the way. So again, you, you help each other to create the situational awareness of what is going on around the tra uh, traffic um, around the airport. Which is very cool. I mean, we're actually kind of like playing being air traffic controllers. But the most important thing is, is that you as soon as other people show up on an uncontrolled airport, you are collaboratively ensuring that the airspace is safe. So you're not only thinking about your own aircraft in comparison to others, but also thinking along what the others do. Bakersfield traffic, Skyline, Papotel, Tango, and Mike is turning final runway 34, full stop, Bakersfield. That was a sh too sh early turn. Okay, push up. Allow that airspeed to bleed off. Also, what really worked last time is coming in a little bit more on the low side. A little bit like this. Because otherwise the touchdown angle is too great. Another bunch of flaps, a little bit more power here. And Bakersfield traffic, or 24 Bravo is about 5 miles west, still at 2000, maneuvering Bakersfield. And push up that nose, pull back. <laughs> well, it still had a bounce, and in the skyline it sounds worse than it actually is. But I like this touchdown better than the ones before. Not in this episode, but in the previous episode. So what I'm doing now is rolling. Actually, I should. I mean, I know there's no other traffic, but I need to actually exit the runway as quickly as possible. But as we will need to park over there, this will be fine. A little bit too much power, so now I need to brake, which is not necessary, really. Okay. Then Archer 34 Bravo, uh, we're entering a left 45 degree entry for the uh, left downwind 34 Bakersfield. Cool, good announcement again, nice. Bakersfield traffic, Skyline Popper Delta, and Mike is uh, clear runway 34 Bakersfield. There we are. And behind the threshold line, full stop. Park and brake set, reset to 1000. Leaning to prevent foul blocks about there, which is good. Uh, landing lights off, strobe lights off, taxi lights, uh, where are we? There they are, taxi lights on. Oh, we didn't set our um, transponder to altitude. That's what we forgot. That's a mistake. Um, ah, there's the other traffic. Um, okay, we can open our windows. And release our parking brakes. Is there anything else? No, I don't think so. Baker still traffic, Archer 34 Bravo sitting left downwind, uh, 3 4. Yep. 3 4 Baker still. We know because there you are. Well, that's awesome, guys. Don't you think? That's Pilot Edge for you. And we're not even chatting to air traffic control, which is uh, 
even uh, more cool. Okay, let's make a turn here. So now the question is, and I will ask this to you guys, do you think that me forgetting my transponder mode, sending that to mode C, to altimeter, uh, to al altitude mode, does that make me fail this test? Or do you guys think it's a minor mistake? Let me know. When we do our shutdown here, I will take a look at the chat. You can see the altimeter is now a little bit below zero altitude, so that means that the pressure, air pressure has changed. This is our parking spot. Okay. Difficult to see, but I'm doing my best. Good. And Bears Hill traffic. Good. Good. Bravo's left base, three, four. Good. He's on base. Well, I would have loved him, loved to see him land, but, well, another day. Um, that's a thousand, so whatever we need to do now is to, let me see, set this to standby. Um, then we do, we can turn off the avionics already. Max, Mac, uh, Magneto test. It's working. Mixture. Cut off. Hang on the ignition switch. There we are. And it's off. Um, taxi lights off. Big Navigation traffic, lights Archer, off. Bravo, short final 3 4, full stop. Big field. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, cow flaps. We can do a close there. And we can open our door. We're at a tie down spot, a medium sized one, but it doesn't really matter. So let's go to here. No, not that one, but that one. Peter tube cover, tie down on wheel chocks. And here we can push in the oak and the control wheel lock. Uh, fuel tank selector to prevent cross feeding. And yeah, panel lights off, I guess. And. Uh, and here we can set the uh, batteries off, generator off, should have already been off. And that's it, I think. Yeah. Um, switching back to the original stream, guys, that wasn't bad. And it was fun, other traffic. Releasing my fa uh, seat, seat belts. Um, traffic. Our traffic for is clear of 3 4 taxi to fuel farms via Delta Alpha Bakersfield. Awesome. Um, yeah, let me see. Um, what should be next landing in Cessna? Do you want to hear the stall warning? Oh, yeah, that's true. I still haven't heard the stall warning during my touchdown, uh, which I already mentioned is a good thing. Um, so, still, I guess I, I, I can hover or flare or slow down more just before touchdown until we hear that um, that stall warning so indeed you're right there's still uh, room for improvement there but it was getting better and i guess that the improvement was in the fact that i shouldn't come in too steep because then the in the, the final stage of my flare becomes a very high angle kind of yoke turn um, rather than going a little bit more shallow or more normal or more properly i guess more appropriately so then you can more easily more fine tune your 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 touchdown uh, move. So that helped. Uh, also, I went in a little bit slower. Perhaps I can even go a little bit more slow. Uh, although I think that initially when I go on touchdown in the touchdown flare, um, my speed should be 65, or as I approach the touchdown spot, and I'm only then just nose up and flare as long as the airspeed bleeds off and wait until you, you hear that stall warning sign and then the airplane just drops on his feet. I guess, I guess that that's the way to go. Uh, FS production, no, because you do not have to have mode C transponder in this airspace. You are right. Um, so the whole idea is when you turn on your transponder to mode C, so the altitude setting, then um, on the radar screens of the air traffic controllers, um, they, um, where is that other airplane? Then the air traffic controllers see oh, your altitude on, on the radar screen. Uh, 
Um, and here, obviously, we're, on a, we're at an uncontrolled airport, so that doesn't really matter. Still, what the point is, is I should have remembered it is a, as a routine. Uh, although it's not mandatory to use it here. Um, oh, there it is. Awesome. Well, I guess he's going to park nearby. I hope. Um, yeah, awesome. So... Um, what did, what, is, what did they say? Yeah, so um, in that case, it still was an error. I, I should have known that I uh, should have turned it uh, to, to the uh, altitude setting, uh, but I just uh, plainly forgot. Um, but I don't think that is a real big fail. I think it was a great, I, I think it was a great flight. I was in control. I was even relaxed. I was even enjoying my flight. I could even explain to you some things while I was flying. I think I can, I have nailed this. I know how to do a traffic pattern. Uh, it would be minor due to the fact you would be told uh, anyway from ATC. Um, it was excellent. Thank you, Dad. Um, what aircraft? Uh, Gekken says. Uh, this is the A2A simulations Cessna Skylane. Um, if you're looking for a highly realistic airplane for FSX or um, prepared, A2A simulations.com is the place to be. Um, awesome. Um, great flight. Uh, I really loved um, um, the other pilot here to, to fly here on Bakersfield 2. Um, no surprise if that is a uncontrolled pilot uh, viewer or uh, please let yourself know so I can uh, uh, thank you here on the stream. Um, really makes the, uh, the flight more dynamic and realistic and also gives you a taste of what Pilot Edge can do for you. Uh, even at an uncontrolled airport. So, um, uh, yeah. Also, in terms of uh, future episodes, tomorrow I will fly again. Uh, but that's my regular flight time, right? Wednesday, 1830 Zulu, or perhaps even a bit earlier. Uh, so you would catch me uh, during my, uh, or just after my pre flight, because again, I'm noticing that when I start too late in the evening with flying, I just simply get tired by the end of the flight. So um, maybe I will fly it uh, 1800 uh, Zulu. Um, but anyway, around that time. Um, so if you are subscribed to Pilot Edge and if you like to fly too, please uh, join in, check in, sign in to Pilot Edge on Bakersfield, get yourself parked around here and join me in my flight, do whatever you like um, and you will be streamed here um, on, the, on my channel as I uh, fly around. So uh, that would be cool. Um, yeah. I passed this flight test, which is great. So next up, that means that if I, let me just check the uh, uncertified pilot flight training program. Um, let me check. Um, uncontrolled airspace. Yeah, no, let's switch. Pop. So as you can see, I already put in the previous flight test here on the uh, on my web page. So traffic patterns, stage two, uncontrolled airspace. Um, now I'm gonna upload this particular episode and uh, put it over here, drop it down here, uh, because I succeeded. Next up are short flights. Well, we already did some short flights, including those practice flights, but uh, not really from one uncontrolled airport to another. So um, that is that is what we're going to focus on now. So that's going to be how to depart and uh, well, really how to arrive at another uncontrolled airport, um, those different entry uh, procedures uh, using pilotage and radio navigation at the same time. You know, that stuff that I did a lot of mess ups <laughs> in the previous episodes. So that's going to be cool. Um, and I already thought that, um, already thought about this, already mentioned it. Um, we are at Bakersfield right now. What about if we just do a tour? just go along this airspace. I mean, there are a lot of uncontrolled airspaces here. Most of them are private, PVT, private. But here's a, a public one. Uh, there's a public one. There's a public one. There's a public one. Um, so that would be cool, I guess. So we can just hop over and see uh, whatever. Well, and this is about 40 nautical miles or so. Let's check. Um, plan. Plan. Uh, is this a uncontrolled? That's wonderful pistachios. I, I really need to fly over there. Wonderful pistachios. <laughs> what a name. Plan. 
Oh yeah, sorry guys, uh, this is the uh, the old overlay again. Uh, sorry. Um, around here we can e also move up even to uh, to these airports if we like. Or let's go to, up to this. Is that a private PTV? Yeah, that's also a private. Um, it doesn't seem like one because it has a uh, crosshair. Crosshair. You can also see this uncontrolled airport has one too, and that means that it has all kinds of facilities. Uh, you can uh, fuel, and uh, I don't know if it also has an FBO. Um, but it usually indicates that it's a public airport, but it doesn't. Well, it is. Obviously, it is. Sorry, 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 sorry. PTV is obviously Porterville. Um, yeah, so we can go all the way up there. And it's also nice because there's Tule as a VOR beacon, so we can do some uh, radio navigation plan. So what? How? What is the distance here? 97 nautical miles. I mean, well, this is getting into an, a long haul flight, but if we hop just from one uh, uncontrolled airport to the next, well, we uh, have a good practice. So that's what I uh, have planned for uh, tomorrow, just to do some uh, quick hops here, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, again, making use of pilotage. I mean, the rivers here, the highways, uh, we can use uh, a venal. Um, and here we can use that uh, chew. So uh, it's going to be cool. We already checked that Lemoore Moa is not uh, conflicting with our uh, flight, so we need to go under it. I think it's great, and we can uh, and we can make use of it and um, and uh, develop those short flight uh, skills. So um, that is uh, for the uh, future episode uh, of tomorrow, episode 14 already. Man, it's going quickly. But I like the fact that I'm making progress again. Uh, as you as you already seen, I mean, the, the traffic pattern flying went uh, pretty great. Um, anything else? No, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. A flight control check. I did. Oh yeah, what I did. Oh, what I sh uh, could mention here is I. Um, um, the updrafts and downdrafts settings of Active Sky Next I had set to a thousand feet up and down, but I was really annoyed really by uh, how extreme that was in the previous flight. So um, I reduced those settings to 250 feet. I mean, uh, I like the fact that they are thermal, there's thermal activity, which is realistic, but not that extreme. So uh, 250 might be fine, uh, might be fine too. Um, and that's about it. Guys, thank you so much again for joining me. I know there were only a few of you guys, but those who are watching YouTube right now, thank you for watching YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, um, if you are really enjoying my channel, um, you can really uh, express your, your gratitude and encourage me by donating. Even any amount would uh, suffice. Uh, a dollar would be great too, uh, because I would really like to visit FlightSimCon. Uh, in uh, the early um, early June, that's the big new flight simulator uh, convention, um, uh, where all the leading developers, A to A simulators will be there, Pilot Edge will be there, uh, Orbix will be there, Airsoft will be there. There will be keynotes and stuff. I would really like to visit those guys and also make a vlog about asking them questions about well the channel uh, and and well any one of you who donates um, is allowed to send in a question. I will ask that question for you. Uh, on my vlog uh, to your favorite developer. So if you are uh, liking what you see, um, any amount, please do so. So um, I can get those flight tickets uh, here from the Netherlands to go all the way to the States. So that's the, um, that's the whole idea. Guys, thank you so much. Happy flights, blue skies, and see you tomorrow. I'm passing through touch 500, 1, 7, 1, 5. 7, 1, 5, 1, 3, 4, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5.